Hey YouTube, today we're giving you the 101 on CNC router tools for cabinet making. Let's get into it. So this video should guide you through setting up your CNC router tools, the feeds, the speeds. So please bear in mind that while we will be sharing our feeds, our speeds for our CNC machine, this may not be an exact replicate of what you may have or what your machine requires. They come much faster, machines run much quicker than what we have. So this is maybe a baseline for a slower CNC machine. Also our vacuum pump is a hurricane vacuum pump which is not really comparable to a becker vacuum pump and if you're unfamiliar with vacuums and hold holding down techniques uh, that is something in a whole other animal to discuss but you're but just keep in mind your feeds and speeds may be faster there is a chance it may be slower based on the size of your machine if you're using one of, a little desktop sort of machine it might be uh, slower so tool one in our tool rack is the five millimeter drill bit. This is used for shelf pins, anything that requires a Euro screw, that would be drawer slides. This will also be drilling the hinge plates. This is one of the most used tools in cabinet making. As we go along here, you'll see our setup in Mosaic software for our feeds and speeds showing up in metric and imperial so you will have to pause the video if you have to copy and paste any of these numbers into your own software but it should work with any software also should note that we have a 16 tool tool rack so yours may be less so here we have a bit of a beat up 3 8 compression oh. bit i should have put a nicer one in there but this is the one that we uh, had in the tools so this guy here it's used for pretty much all through cutting on your CNC machine. So if you're cutting all the way through on melamine, MDF, this will be your main cutout tool. And there's a good chance this one's you're going to go through quite a few of these bits. You may use a different diameter for cutting through plywood and stuff like that. So we order our tools from Luco Tool. Just want to show you how these compression bit bits work. There's a little up cut at the bottom, as you can see, the spiral is reversed, and then it's the down cut on the top section. So here we have our 20 millimeter drill bit. This one is used pretty much strictly for hardware drilling. The hardware that we use is called Richelieu Titus or Rafex 20. It's a hardware style that has a small plastic piece that uh, hammers into the cabinet part and then a five millimeter drill bit gets drilled into the gable side if it's a shelf and these are nice because they don't require end boring or anything like that it just drills a little bit off the edge of the board so next we have the 3 8 down cut quite similar in appearance to the 3 8 compression with some significant different differences. This one here, uh, the 3 8 down cut, is used mostly for dados, rabbits, on wood, melamine, MDF. Most cutting that does not cut all the way through. You might use a 3 8 down cutter to through cut MDF because the bottom edge of MDF isn't really critical. If you through cut with a with a down cut, it would chip the bottom side because it's pushing the chips down. As you can see here, they're quite similar. The three is compression on the left and the down cutter on the right, but the difference being that the that little bit of up cut on the bottom of the three eighths compression on the left side just pulls the chips away from the bottom, and that way it uh, doesn't chip it out. So, as you can see, you're drilling. Sorry, if you're dadoing, this is pushing the chips down. And when you have a 3 8 compression and you're through cutting, it's pulling the chips away from the bottom. And that gives you a nice cut on both sides of your board. So this one's the traditional one for through cutting. So cabinet making is an animal that requires a lot of different drill bits, different operations for different hardware. And this quarter inch drill bit is one 
of those bits that only really gets used for one operation. And while well, that operation gets repeated several times, we use this for the backhole on tandem drawer boxes. A lot of our drawer boxes, we make our melamine drawer boxes fully made from melamine. Uh, as you can see here, the back of the drawer guide has a pinhole or pin that slides into a six millimeter or quarter inch hole. And that's the only real operation we use that quarter bit for. Next we have the eight millimeter drill bit. This one here, again, with this theme of drill bits performing only one operation. We are quite spoiled that we have a 16 tool tool rack. We upgraded this ourselves. Um, this eight millimeter drill bit is used for bloom hinge boring. This will drill out the top two holes on a bloom hinge. And honestly, that's the only thing we use it for. If we're doing something custom, we'll use it for that as well. But this is traditionally what we use this for, just drilling that those two holes there. Surprise, surprise, another drill bit. 10 millimeter drill bit here. This one is used for our leg holes at the bottom of the cabinets. So this one actually gets quite a bit of use. Any Anytime we have an adjustable leg, it requires this 10 millimeter drill bit. If you don't want to use a 10 millimeter drill bit and you're using a software like Mosaic or whatever, Vectric or something like that, uh, you can just use a 3 8 compression and just hog out. It will just drop in and do a little circle to get that hole. But for us, because we drill so many of these, we need to have a dedicated tool. So next up we have the 60 degree V bit. V bits in general have various uses from sign cutting, V carving. You can use a V bit for chamfering. We use it ourselves for doing the inside of the style and rail profile for which we manufacture a lot. We do a lot of shaker doors, MDF pocketed out panels, and use the shaker or use this bevel bit to do that inside edge profile. Now we do a lot of these pocketed door styles with this door pocketing bit. This bit specifically is meant for kind of hogging out the center of center panel of a shaker door. You might find that if you machine the front face of a full sheet of MDF that you'll get some cupping on the face side. This is a problem if you, one, use the wrong MDF. You need to use premium quality MDF. We use Ranger Platinum. The next component is paint the doors right away. And there is also a third component in that you may want to do a little relief cut on the back of the door. Some people would argue that works best. So next up we have the quarter compression bit. Our quarter compression bit is, while it's the same as the 3 8 compression and the fact that it can cut through material nicely, it has a little bit of different variation in that it does a nicer job cutting plywood. So we'll use this a lot of times for our Baltic birch plywood drawers. So we'll use this for the the outside perimeter pass as well as the required tool pass in mosaic software that you need it to do the pins of the dovetail drawer box if you're flat cutting it on your cnc machine as you can see here it's just cutting out the pins this tool here the dovetail bit will cut out the tail side of the dovetail drawer box if you're interested in making dovetail drawers on your cnc machine Check out our video right here, and this video shows you our real-time setup of how we got our dovetail drawers working in Mosaic software. I don't know if it would work the same in other softwares, but definitely Mosaic software. This was our setup. The end result was pretty good. We've gotten better as time's gone on. We found that the quality of the dovetail drawer box is greatly improved when you buy the right plywood. So next up here is the 1 8 straight bit. The 1 8 straight bit for us is really just a kind of a clean out tool. So if we're doing a square corner or trying to get as square of a corner as we can get, we'll use this 1 8 uh, corner clean out bit. And this one here we use mostly for our main machined doors that we'll do with that 60 degree V bit 
we'll use this one just to clean out that flat part pod in the corner. So next up we have the miter fold bit. I feel like miter folding is an absolute art on its own and we've gotten into this for the last few years and there's some serious advantages to it. Uh, we do use it quite a bit and there's two sort of variations of miter folding. One would be if you're miter folding MDF where you're folding over, you're, you're doing a 45 or sorry, 90 degree cut and you're bending it and leaving just a skin of material to fold it. And the other option is cutting through and then just taping the joint and gluing it up. So this one here is a bit of a wild card that we do have in our tool rack, so I threw it in here. This is 3 O flute. So an O flute is pretty much strictly used for sort of different materials than you would typically cut as a cabinet shop. Uh, more like sign materials such as acrylic, alu panel. Uh, the feeds and speeds for this do vary quite a bit, so make sure you look at the su uh, supplier of the material that you're cutting. Sometimes they'll actually give you the feeds and speeds right on there. There's definitely a point where you just start melting the material. So next up we have the resurfacing bit. So if you have a nesting router where you have a piece of MDF that's flat on the surface and your vacuum sucks through and holds the material down, you need a resurface bit to flatten that MDF to make sure that your tool paths are cutting into the right depth and into the right into the spoil board. So it's also used for flattening lumber. This large walnut slab was flattened with that resurface bit. Extra points if you notice our old setup where we only had eight tools, so sad. Aww. Last but not least is our CNC cup sanding head. This is a bit of a new addition and we put this in once we did our new tool rack. It actually required that cut out in the back to fit it on our tool rack. Uh, this tool is used for sanding MDF doors, requires a much slower speed. What we use is 2000 RPM. This tool was purchased from Flex Trim, fits, onto, fits on our E32 router setup. And uh, that concludes our video for CNC router tools. There's a lot to be explored with CNC routing. This is just a sort of a starter video. If you've never used CNC's before, this will definitely help you get on the way to making some amazing products. Thanks for watching. Have a great one. If you're eager to dive deeper into Mosaic, enhance your shop, or explore the possibilities with CNC routers and 3D printing, you're in the right place. Your feedback drives our content, so subscribe to stay updated with the latest tutorials and tips. Watch out for our next video.